Hi everyone, this is going to be a quick approach to radiology. By the end of this talk, I want you to have a big picture framework on how to approach any study you see in radiology. Be able to describe black, white, and gray on radiograph CT and ultrasound. The focus here is going to be on description, not on diagnosis. Uh, I want you to be able to describe black, white, and gray in the very basic of MRI uh, sequences. Uh, employ those skills to take a case, and then we'll do some practice cases at the end. So how to approach a study at the workstation. The biggest thing is to develop a structured search pattern, and that will come with each rotation that you do. Next thing to do is to recognize the abnormality, and once you do that is to describe the finding, and that is the hardest part. You have to know what modality it is, be able to characterize it uh, using the words that we're going to talk about, and then say where it is in the body using your anatomy knowledge. Finally, you take everything you talk up here and make it into a diagnosis or differential diagnosis. I think of learning radiology sort of in two steps. This is the first step, and this is something you should be able to do by the end of your first year and with every rotation. This last step is why we're in residency for four years. So with ultrasound, we talk about echogenicity. Black is anechoic, white is hyperechoic, and gray is hypoechoic. When two things are the same echogenicity as each other, they are isoechoic, iso for the same. For example, this ultrasound image of the right kidney in long axis, the inferior exophytic structure is anechoic, the renal parenchyma is hypoechoic to the renal pelvis fat, and the renal pelvic fat is isoechoic to the perinephic fat, meaning the same echogenicity. For CT and radiograph, it tells just density information, uh, and we talk about white being hyperdense and black being hypodense. You can also talk about attenuation, as in how much does each structure attenuate the beam. So white is hyperattenuating and black is hypoattenuating. More so on radiograph, you can talk about opacities or lucencies. So for example, this sagittal contrast-enhanced CT through the abdomen shows a hypodense exophytic structure off the inferior pole of the right kidney. Just for example's sake, the bones, the ribs here, are hyperdense, and the air in the lungs is hypodense. So this is a simple renal cyst, and this is actually the same patient. MRI gets a little bit more confusing, but this is my broad way of thinking about things, and I think if you keep this in mind throughout whatever MRI you see, this will get you maybe 75% of the way there. T1 is generally for anatomy, where uh, there are only five things that are bright here. And this is important to know and memorize, and this is a mnemonic I have found helpful. T2 is generally for pathology. And I say for pathology because fluid and edema are bright, and Many, but not all, pathologies in the body, whether it's neoplastic, infectious, or inflammatory, are associated with some sort of fluid and edema. Fat is also bright. Flare and stir help distinguish which one of these three it is. And so in flare imaging, fluid, straight regular fluid, turns dark. In stir imaging, fat turns dark. So how to take a case in conference. How this will work is the presenter will uh, show an image and ask someone to take the case. Whoever takes the case will start by describing the images. They'll describe the modality, the cuts, and the projections, and say whether it's with or without contrast. Then they'll describe the findings using the descriptive words and modality-based words we talked about earlier and put it anatomically. And then finally give a differential diagnosis. This is a skill that you need to practice, uh, and I find it very helpful. So for the next part of this lecture, we're just gonna do practice cases. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show an image, then you just think about what you wanna say, and then I'm gonna say what I would say. Uh, I'm gonna go pretty quickly, so if you need to, pause the video after I show the image. So for this one, okay, get ready. An opacity in the lower right lung obscures the right heart border the diaphragm is well visualized, however. So this is a right middle lobe pneumonia. Try this one. 
a axial slice through a non-contrast enhanced CT head shows a crescentic hyperdensity in the right hemiconvexity, which exhibits mass effect by partially effacing the right lateral ventricle and causing mass effect. There's associated sulcal effacement. This is a subdural hematoma from, unfortunately, a gunshot wound. An ultrasound image of the right kidney in grayscale and with color shows anechoic fluid distending the collecting system, the renal pelvis, and the calyces. The anechoic fluid is avascular. This makes this urinary tract dilation. In kids, we call it urinary tract dilation rather than hydronephrosis, which you'll learn on your rotation. And then finally, just one other point. For ultrasound, you orient in terms of the object that you're imaging rather than the plane of the body. So we say the long axis of the kidney rather than a sagittal view of the body. Okay, same thing here. Look at it, try to put some words to it. Axial and sagittal slice of a CT abdomen with contrast shows a focal hyperdense stone in the superior pole of the right kidney surrounded by hypodense fluid and with adjacent ill-defined heterogeneously enhancing renal parenchyma and perinephic fat stranding. This is a obstructing stone with pyelonephritis. Okay, this is an MRI. I've labeled the sequences here. Three axial MR images in T2, T1, and T1 post contrast, and one coronal image in flare shows a rim enhancing T1 hypo intense, T2 hyper intense mass in the inferior anterior left frontal lobe with surrounding T2 and flare hyperintensities. This is a cryptococcal abscess. Okay, this is a trauma case. An axial and coronal image of a CT abdomen with contrast shows a ill-defined hypodensity in the region of the porta hepatis. This is a liver laceration. Finally, here's this one. Focus on this. So a PA and lateral chest radiograph shows a mass-like opacity in the left upper lobe. This turned out to be a polymicrobial abscess. Okay, that's it. Uh, email me anytime with any questions. Thank you.